Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Comic Con podcast. This is episode 22 for the date of June 2nd, 2021. We're actually recording this a couple days early, but it will be dropping on Friday, which is the 4th of June. And like always, it's myself, Zach, aka the Manimal. And with me is my boy, Justin, aka Nemesis Prime. What's up, bud? Hey, Zach. Been a while. We haven't really talked a lot this week, but I'm excited to be here for episode 2022 of 2021 uh, i we got a lot of stuff to talk about man it's good a good, good episode today yeah it's funny it's because so we usually do this on like thursday nights and obviously we're recording this on a wednesday night dropping on friday and uh, it's nice to kind of give it till thursday because we get a little bit more news and sometimes when we've done these early episodes we've kind of had to like dredge you know for like topics and whatnot but there's some good good news that came out today but like always it's the comic community podcast. So we're going to start with the comic community. We got a couple questions and comments and Justin's going to kick us off with those. Yes, we do. So our first question of the evening comes from actually our YouTube channel. Uh, you know, I've been posting some of the older stuff on there as always. So you could always kind of check that out. But this one comes from our friend on Instagram as well as on YouTube, Astro Wizard. He said, great show again, guys. Shit, send me the, the the books that that dude didn't want. And that was when we were talking about the my mystery box. Oh. Like 10 episodes ago. Yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> he says, I'll take it. Yeah, that was forever ago. I know. Well, you know, that's how I've been doing. It was like right. once every couple weeks. But he said, top-notch content. Thanks, Astro. Uh, Manimal, do you think X-23 is going to be the one they push in the MCU versus Logan? I've heard whispers, but not sure how I feel about her going to be Wolverine, going to be her over wolverine so uh what do you think yeah i mean that's tricky i i think the answer is no um but it is kind of weird because we we have seen with the tom taylor run where she took over and the all new wolverine she became wolverine even now in the hickman era she is goes by the name wolverine um, what we're going to see in the new upcoming team of X-Men, she's on the team as wolverine as well so they are definitely pushing the wolverine title on her but I, I think Feige knows what's up. I think you can't mess around. Look at look at the old X-Men movies. The main character was Wolverine. Everyone mm -hmm. wants to see Wolverine. Now, would it be a horrible d decision? I don't know. Maybe not because it's going to be hard to find a new actor to replace Hugh Jackman. You know what I mean? He's, yeah. I, it feels like no one's going to be good enough. So I don't think so. I, I don't think you'll have uh, X-23 without there being a Wolverine. I don't know. What do you think? Yeah, I as much as I'd love to see X-23, Laura Kinney, you know, back on the big screen. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't, you know, I'm sure they're going to, you know, like you said, Feige's going to do it. He's going to bring in Logan first and maybe down the line, you know, we're talking maybe right. like 10 years, you know, we're, we're going to be into our, you know, late 40s, if not 50s, by the time Laura Kinney shows up. But I mean, you never know. Uh, you know, there's a mm -hmm. lot of projects in the works at, uh, at Disney Marvel and they're under wraps. So maybe we see her kind of how like she when she first appeared in the cartoons you know she was kind of in that like almost like a new mutants type of thing so right we could see her with a group and you know see where she lands you know the x-men is ripe for like disney plus shows because there's so many characters of the x-men there's so many stories and side side offs and things you can do that you could actually like take characters into the Disney plus to do stuff. So you could almost take whoever you cast as Wolverine, do a Disney plus show with an introduction of X 23 and do it there and then see mm -hmm. if she like hits, you know, I mean, we, we saw her in Logan, but it wasn't like the X 23 we all know and love, you know, like the badass killer assassin X 23. Mm -hmm. So I mean, who knows, man? I, I don't know. The X-Men is just a big question mark right now in general. Yeah. So. That, that and uh, Fantastic Four are yeah. the two, you know, when are they coming? I, well, we've seen the logo for Fantastic Four, right? but the X-Men is is completely just like non-existent in the world of <laughs> movies and, and TV shows right now after what was yeah. the last thing was what? New Mutants, right? Yeah, I think, the they're, I think they're a little overwhelmed with X-Men right now. Like, I think that they're probably having the same questions we all are, which is <laughs> how the hell are we going to do this? <laughs> Where are these characters going to show up? And you know, how do we replace characters like Hugh Jackman, Patrick Stewart, Ian McKellen, and and all those guys, McAvoy and Fassbender? Anyway, mm -hmm. so great question. Definitely, definitely. Uh, and we actually have a second question, and this one is actually going to lead into our comic book 
section topic of the evening, which is really great. So this is this is on our Instagram. This is a uh, commented from Hard Knocks Collectibles. He said, "Great episode, fellas. I was late to the party." Manuel, thanks for talking about Reptile and how you enjoyed it. So many people are shitting on it because it's a kids book. What the what the fuck? Why can't there be kid? Why can't there be books for kids? Every damn book doesn't have to be post apocalyptic. My boys are six and four and love Reptile. They saw him on the cartoon on Netflix called Marvel Frost Fight. What kid wouldn't want to turn himself into a dinosaur? LOL. Right? Uh, I read it to I read it to them and go, that's a great way to get into it for me. Question for the show. What do you guys think about Cates and Otley on Hulk and Al Ewing on Venom? I'm so excited for Donnie Cates to be writing my favorite hero. After that, after that, he's done for Venom and Thor. Come on, what do we think? So first with the with the reptile comment, I, I like we said, was it last week? I think we talked mm -hmm. about yep. reptile. And um, I'm telling you, dude, this dude's gonna be a hit. He's gonna be a hit. And when people are complaining, because I've complained, I'm gonna be honest with you, I've complained, but about certain characters. We, how can you complain again about Reptile and then people be out here super jazzed about Ms. Marvel? I mean, in Devil Dinosaur, you know, yeah, like how can you are, not see him? Those are the he's same. Absolutely characters. gonna be on that show. Like he's animated. Be massive, bro. Like there is so much appeal to the younger generation for a character like this. And he's a cool character, also. Like for being kind of like a children's character, I mentioned it last uh last episode when he showed up in Avengers Academy. He was actually pegged as being the Avengers thought he was going to be a villain. There is darkness in this character. I mean, there mm -hmm. is an edge to this guy. So there is a lot to do with Reptile. Don't sleep on this run, man. Reptile one through four um, little mini series. Don't sleep on it. So, nice. but the news, man, big time news and actually like really cool news. Cause it's almost like a flip flop of mm -hmm. uh, artists and writers and two major characters in Marvel. Which one are you most excited for? I kind of want to know what's going on with Venom. So okay. I'll, I'll, I'll do the Venom article. Yeah, you can take Venom. Yeah. So uh, over at gamesradar.com, Venom gets an all-star creative team for a new title later this year. Venom's new creative team under Al Ewing, Ram V, and Brian Hitch later this year. So uh, as we all know, you know, Donny Cates and Ryan Stegman completely redefined Venom's mythos and elevated Eddie Brock to the status of a symbiote god in uh, King and Black. Now, uh, starting August 14th, free comic book day 2021, there's a Spider-Man slash Venom free one shot, which is kind of a preview that kind of sets up the new Venom number one. Now, there's no planned release date for this ongoing title, but uh, all the artists and writers are describing the new title as dramatic and dangerous with a twisted new vision for the character. Considering how intense the story was for King and Black and how much it altered Eddie Brock and Venom's placement with the symbiotes and the Marvel Universe, taking things to a level even beyond that is a tall order to do says them. So, uh, yeah, it's very interesting because I feel like we've gotten a few ongoing venom series probably in the past six years. Yeah. Like we had, we had the Lee price venom, right? We had that venom, the first uh, space night, which was absolute garbage. I Agent, like the Lee price Agent venom, right? Was that was the same the, one, right? Oh no, that was even before that was the remainder run. And that's my, oh, gotcha. That's my favorite run. I, you know, I'll always defend it. That the the Rick Remender run, the Flash Thompson, yeah, yeah, that was just awesome. Uh, and then again, the Donny Cates kind of like bringing him to an all new level. And again, now we have we have Al Ewing. And for anybody out there who doesn't know how Al Ewing is, he's the one who's been behind the Immortal Hulk series. Oh man, um, that's been extremely well. I would say for the beginning. Um, the latter half of the series is kind of like people are kind of like, ah, oh, let it just kind of be done. But you know what happens? These runs are like good in the beginning and then not so great. And then down the line, people go back to them and like they see things that happened in these issues and they're like, that was really, that was really good. So yeah, I definitely am, am interested in the, the Venom series by these guys. So especially with Ram and, um, Hitch doing the art. Uh, Hitch's art is very interesting. I remember when he was doing Justice League for a while, the Justice League of America. Uh, he's got a, a very weird uh, art style. So I'm, I'm excited to see how he pulls this with Venom. What do you think? Yeah, I'm excited too. Um, we actually talked about this a couple of weeks ago about like when Donny Cates leaves Venom, where will villain, uh, Venom go? Will it, will they play off the King in Black and how like obviously in past Marvel times sometimes it, the new the next writer just ignores what happened in like the previous storyline and does their own thing so it's kind of cool to see that i also mm -hmm. read that um it's kind of going in space and that he's leaving earth for a little while so it'll take venom away and he might be um 
kind of like trying to find a new home planet for the symbiote race. And that the and maybe a lot of people are thinking that with um, minor spoiler alert, if you're not caught up on Venom, with the return of Flash Thompson, Agent Venom, that we actually, the reason we might have two writers is you might have them writing two different characters. So um, Al Ewing might be writing Venom and Ram might be writing uh, Eddie or Agent, blah, blah, Agent Venom, Flash Thompson, or vice versa. So I think that's really cool. Like that would be really fun to see the two characters, like a story, each issue kind of like merge these two characters and stories, like how it goes along. I think that would be awesome. Yeah, with the with the Venom stuff, well, I should say with the symbiote stuff, it's almost like a Green Lantern core because right. the symbiotes are, you know, they, anybody can bond with them. So same yeah. thing like the Green Lantern, Red Lantern. So you could have Eddie Brock in space and then you can have, you know, Flash Thompson, Agent Venom here on Earth. And like you said, have those two interchangeable storylines where, yeah, you're reading one half of the story is, is uh, Eddie Brock and the other half is with Flash. Mm -hmm. And it makes sense. Like it's yeah. fluid. So if a Venom, if it, you know, if Venom shows up in a Marvel crossover and it's Flash Thompson, maybe it's grounded on Earth, and then you have Guardians of the Galaxy or Squadron Supreme or Fantastic Four, and they're running into Venom out in space. So. Shit, you have in in Savage Avengers right now. Conan is wielding a symbiote weapon, so he's oh, got like right. a, yep. a piece of symbiote that he's using as a weapon. So I mean, yeah, the symbiotes. There's just so much you can do with them. So. That's cool. And, you know, to kind of tag into that and dovetail onto the, the same topic. So Al Ewing, like Justin said, how was crushing it in Immortal Hulk. And it's funny how they're switching these two writers because these are probably the biggest two titles lately in Marvel and like the most acclaimed titles in Marvel lately. The Venom run by Donny Cates and the Al Ewing run by Immortal Hulk. So to see the two writers just switch and flip flop is really cool. So we're seeing um, Donny Cates leave the Venom run and take mm -hmm. Al Ewing's place on the new ongoing Hulk run. So the current Immortal Hulk is going to end here in, I believe it's September um, with issue 50. So we're going to round it out. And like Justin said, also, I kind of agree. The early stuff was amazing. It's been really interesting, like the what they've done with the character of Hulk. But there's been some lagging in the middle. So it, it, it's kind of cool that it's, it's definitely going to end. So. Anyway, so Donny Cates jumping in, and if you thought the Hulk's world was violent before, the new series may just be taking that destruction to an all-new level. So this new series looks to be altering the dynamic between Bruce Banner and the Hulk once more. Marvel's press release, press release teases Banner may have finally found the radical solution to controlling his transformations, implying it may be the one that permanently takes Hulk off the table. But will that solution have unintended consequences for the Marvel Universe? Better the Hulk you know than the one you don't. And as we've seen in the Mortal Hulk run, there's like five or six Hulks out there, you know, that are, and some of them are not good, you know. So <laughs> anyways, Kate's goes on saying, Marvel just gave me the keys to the strongest one there is. Oh boy, you guys are not ready for this. You're about to find out what happens when Ryan Otley and I get angry. And guess what? Well, pretty sure you're going to like us a lot when we're angry. So really cool. Like I said, Immortal Hulk is ending issue 50 on September 1st. Hulk will then debut in November, the same month as Ewing and Ram kick off their Venom series. And just like them as well, we're also going to be getting a free comic book day 2021 on August 14th. And it's going to be an Avengers Hulk number one, which will have a short story leading into the Kate's and Otley series. So Marvel is definitely putting a lot of iron into the fire on these two titles. I mean, they're free comic, but they're going to have two free comic book days. How, when's the last time they put out two titles on free comic book day? It's been a while, right? Yeah, they Usually always they just typically do a Spider Man. Spider -Man. Yeah. yeah, maybe an Avengers. That's not true. They typically do a Spider Man and an Avengers. I feel like so that's yeah. pretty that's pretty regular. So this year we're gonna have Avengers Hulk and what was it? It was Venom Spider Man. <laughs> so look, <laughs> exactly what we're talking about. Just adding in these two new characters. So mm -hmm. yeah, it's really interesting to bring in a Hulk. I, I can't remember the last time. You know, yes, there is, like you said, there's always, it's either Avengers or Spider-Man or mm -hmm. even X-Men. I don't even think they've, I can't recall an X-Men free comic book day they that they've did. did. The Hickman era. There was a free comic book day for X-Men. Okay. Recently. Yeah. But like, last, when have you ever one. seen Hulk? Like Hulk is a huge character to have his own like free comic book day where it's a free book, you know, to get people out there and read this. It's just like, damn, we're, you know, who's going to be picking up this series? Obviously anybody who's been following Donny Cates, He's done his stuff with Guardians. Mm -hmm. 
Silver Surfer Black, the Venom stuff, like Thor. You know, yeah, the, the list goes on and on. Right. So now he's taking, like you said, one of the strongest Avengers. Yeah, and so, and I don't know if I mentioned this. So it's going to just be titled Hulk. So it's self-titled Hulk alone. And you're saying, yeah, you know, like when's the last time you saw Hulk? Well, honestly, before Al Ewing, when's the last good Hulk story we had? Planet Hulk, World War Hulk, maybe, you know? And before yeah. you go way back to like the Peter David stuff, of course, but Hulk has kind of been suffering from uh, lack of good writing until Al Ewing showed up and kind of took it. It's interesting, man. It's so cool to see these two writers get kind of like the flip-flop because in a way they both did the same things on the titles, you know, like they both made Venom and Hulk like horror titles, pretty much horror, mm -hmm. like kind of supernatural titles, which I think is awesome, man. So I'm excited. This is, this is good. I, like I really enjoyed immortal Hulk. Um, I definitely will keep reading Hulk, which is not something I would typically read prior to immortal Hulk and Venom for mm -hmm. sure. I'll keep reading as well. Cool. So, so now we got some TV news. We got some good news. We got some bad news. Um, we got some controversial news. And that's the one I think we're going to start with. So I'm going to kick this one to you because you definitely are more, neither one of us are very knowledgeable when it comes to this title, but it's definitely DC, DC, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? A, 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 DC, next to DC. I don't know what I was looking for. Yeah. But, I, well, it's, well, it's really a vertigo title. Right. But, uh, Adjacent, God, yeah. DC adjacent. Jesus, I couldn't remember that word. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, not too much to talk about, but you know, recently the the cast, we we've seen the cast picture for Sandman for all the actors and actresses who were playing the different characters, and this one's really interesting. So, this is over at IGN.com. Uh, Neil Gaiman gives zero fucks about toxic backlash to Sandman castings. Now, I know that's the second time I've said the word fuck, and now that's the third time I've said it in tonight's <laughs> episode, and I apologize to anybody who was offended, but that's the article. I'm sorry. Verbatim. But, uh, yeah. So basically, you know, not everybody's happy with the, you know, Netflix roundout castings, but of course, co-creator of, uh, and also as executive producer, Neil Gaiman makes it clear that he doesn't give a fuck about the negative backlash to the character's especially the actress or actresses. Uh, first, we have Kirby Howell uh, Babstips as Death. Uh, and if anyone doesn't know, if you know Vertigo, Death is pretty much a pale-faced uh, girl with dark hair. And the actress who's playing Death is a black woman. So there possibly is some backlash there. And then there's uh, Mason Alexander Park, who's playing Desire. Now in... Uh, desire is kind of a in between, I guess, type of character. A gender fluid, non binary yes. character. Yeah. So, you know, and Neil Gaiman basically tw tweeted, I give all, <laughs> this is great. <laughs> I give all the fucks about the work. I spent 30 years successfully battling bad movies of Sandman. So, I mean, it, it's Neil Gaiman's baby. You know? Right. He, he doesn't care. I don't, I think we, you and I, we really don't care. I think it's the people that are complaining, I think is the backlash because of on the casting photo, when they show the actor or actress and who they would be playing, they gave them the pronoun of him or his or her, or she. And that's what I really feel like everyone's kind of out there being so upset about. Right. Right. Yeah. You know, <clears throat> I don't think anyone really cares about the, uh, the casting. I think it's, we're living in a very, uh, tumultuous time where people are offended or acting offended to battle against the offended, if that makes any sense. And mm -hmm. people are just kind of looking for a reason to be upset. Um, personally, I, I, like I said, I've never read Sandman. Um, I don't know a lot about this character or the story at all. I mean, I, I definitely will watch the show. I'm excited to watch the show. Um, I thought it was, I didn't care about the casting. I, honestly, when it's characters like, you know, let's take the death character, for example, when it's characters like death, okay. And, and mm -hmm. instead of making it uh, a pale white woman and you make it a, a black woman, I don't really care. Like it's not, it's not a massive character to me. That's not the same as like recasting Superman as black. You know what I mean? It's not the mm -hmm. same. So that's fine. It's very interchangeable. Now, when I saw the, the pro the list of pronouns i definitely groan <laughs> i mean I, you know like i get it like i respect everyone's choice i respect everyone's you know who they want to be as a person it does not affect me whether you want to be a man a woman non-binary gender fluid you know any of that 
the pronouns thing, I'm sorry. I, I'm not going to butcher the English language to make you comfortable. Like, I, I don't know about that. That's not really that not big on the pronouns. Um, I will never be rude to someone or offensive to someone, but I don't understand how I call us an individual a they, them. That doesn't make any sense to me. So it mm -hmm. just was very like in your face. You know what I mean? And I think people uh, the are biggest one tired of this stuff right now. Oh, uh, yeah, it's it's a definite 100% agree. And I think the biggest one is we've already seen one of the characters from the Sandman universe, Lucifer. Right. We've seen him. He was on. He had a Fox TV show. Yeah. And then the last two seasons were on Netflix. And Lucifer in the Sandman series is Captain Phasma herself, uh, yeah. Gwendolyn Christie. Like, so, again, are, do you really care? Like, she's a great actress. Oh, I mean, right. Obviously, from Game of Thrones. Uh, and again, Captain Phasma, do you really care that Lucifer is going to be a woman or, you know, non-gender or who knows? Like, I think it's awesome. I think she deserves the role because it's a prominent character in this universe. Mm -hmm. um, and there's even other other characters like uh, I, I kind of know a little bit um, the character, the, the librarian of the dreaming. Uh, yeah, I remember reading the last run that like Jim Lee had some stuff to do with. Uh, again, that's a, the librarians typically like just a white woman. Uh, the actress is a black woman. Like, do I, do I care? No. Like I just want to kind of see these characters be put into a more prominent role. Like they can right. be who they want to be. Just make it a great series and make it understandable because you and I know reading Sandman is almost near impossible from gaming. Yeah. And so, and like, and, and honestly, you know, I think we're kind of, you and I are on the same page here where it's like, neither one of us are offended by this. So I am, we're both kind of like grown about it, but then mm -hmm. to also troll the people who, like the people who get super offended about this, like I kind of want to troll them as well a bit. Like, for example, everyone who got super upset that they recast John Constantine as a woman, you're kind of an idiot because that's not John Constantine. So you just jumped to the front to get upset about it. And mm -hmm. it's actually his ancestor, right? Yeah, it's like great grandmother. Or it's jo Joanna. Joanna. Joanna, yeah. So yeah. everyone was like, oh my God, they made John Constantine a woman. They're ruining the story. And it's like, and it's even kind of what Neil Gaiman says in the, uh, in the article. He's like, all this hatred is coming from people who have not read the books. So I don't really care. <laughs> you know, and that, I mean, so I don't know, dude. I'm happy to see it. This seems like this might be the most digestible way <laughs> to get the Sandman storyline, <laughs> so, which people are probably going to get really mad because I have heard it's pretty awesome. I have heard that. Um, yeah. I, I know people that, yeah, when I used to work in a comic shop, people would tell me that it's a great read. It's a tough read. You really have to go back sometimes and reread certain things. And I, I don't know, like I'd rather just read a book and enjoy it. I don't really want to have to like read through several issues and then go back because there's something else that I missed and don't understand. Cause it's very, it's definitely word heavy kind of mm -hmm. like how Hickman's new X-Men is right. where you kind of have to read every little bit. You can't miss anything. You know, I, there was a time when um, I, I looked at like getting the collected editions to read this and it was difficult. I mean, mm -hmm. the library, some of the library editions and stuff are all sold out. And so, I mean, I guess you could go online and read them online, but I, I, like I said, I think I'm just going to wait and digest this on Netflix. Um, mm -hmm. Do we have a date for that one that's supposed to? No, no release date yet. Yeah, nothing yet. So, okay. So, yeah, it's Neil Gaiman's uh, Sandman series and all the anger trolls out there. So, kind mm -hmm. of following on the Netflix theme, this was super bummer. Oh, um, so sad. Yeah, dude. So, they just announced that Jupiter's Legacy series is canceled as Netflix reworks the franchise. So they canceled it after the first seasons with sources claiming the comic property may be reworked in the future. Now, what does that mean? I don't know, dude. I mean, does it mean recasting, restarting, rebooting? Honestly, super uninterested if that happens. Um, but Deadline is reporting that Netflix has decided to pass on making season two of Jupiter's Legacy based on the Mark Miller and Frank Quitely comic book of the same name. They've released the cast from their commitments as well as well. According to Deadline sources, Netflix may bring back the pro property in a different form, but for now, Miller and the streamer had created differences that couldn't be resolved in time to secure the cast, including the big names like Josh Dumal and Leslie Bibb for another batch of episodes. We're confident we'll return to it later. What does that mean to you when you hear in a different form? I feel like it means animation, right? Uh, yeah, I guess because it's easier to do. Yeah. But... <sighs> I don't know. I, I'm really upset. I, I was actually at the comic shop today 
uh, and I was talking to someone about Jupiter's legacy and I explained to them how, and this is spoiler, you know, we've kind of already talked about it. It's been out, I guess for a month now, uh, how the whole part where they go to the Island and him going crazy is not in the comics at all. It's mm-hmm. really going to be, they're going to be throwing that in the new Jupiter's Requiem. That's going to be coming out in July. So th- it's just like, I was so excited for this series. And the, the one guy who I was talking to, he's like, Oh, I only got through the two first two episodes. And I kind of was, it was like late after work. I really wasn't feeling it. I was like, man, I love that series. I thought yeah. the action was great. The fact that again, we we've talked about the review, how it's just like a first generation of superheroes with their kids and how they all grew up and everyone's kind of intertwined where kid they're they're all their kids are friends and, Oh, it's such a great series. I'm so I cannot believe it's not getting picked up again for season two. Like, how do you yeah. just leave it like that? I don't know, dude. And I guess and so maybe this will help some people out or make you feel a little bit better. But they're saying that they are going to move on to the live action adaptation of Super Crooks, which exists mm-hmm. in the same universe as Jupiter's Legacy comics. So I've actually never read Super Crooks. Um, and apparently it's about like, have, have you read that one? You said you own that. I own it. I just never read it. But I know it's very good. So it's all the villain. Maybe it's like the villains in the Jupiter's Legacy universe. Um, maybe let's take it up real let's, quick. Let's take a look. That's kind of what I'm reading here. So, and he's saying, you know, Mark Millar saying he always loved crime stories from Scorsese to Tarantino, and supervillains are always the most fun part of any superhero story, which is definitely probably true. He said to do something exclusively focused on the villains they fight just feels incredibly fresh as we explore what it's like to be a bad guy in a world crawling with good guys who want to put you in jail. Jupiter's legacy is a vast and rich space with lots of characters to mine. And so I'm happy to share that our next step here is live action version of the super crooks comic I created with oh man, Lionel Francis, you a few years back. So given okay. where we're going next, we've made the tough call of letting our incredible cast either show commitment as we continue to thoughtfully develop all realms of the Ju- Jupiter's legacy saga. So, so yeah, so it looks like it is in the same little universe and, um, so who knows? We might see these characters show back up. Maybe it'll merge. Maybe you'll get like an, a season of Super Crooks and then we'll come back to Jupiter's Legacy or like, you know, maybe it'll be like the Netflix, you know, Marvel stuff where they one big season all together mm-hmm. or something, you know? Yeah, Super Crooks is definitely an interesting... Uh, it, it, again, it's it's I mean, it's interesting because it's in Millar's world mm-hmm. and I like how they're creating this thing all on Netflix and there's obviously series that you want to see on Netflix and there's series that I want to see that he's done. Um, but with... You know, it's basically I'm kind of reading it online. So it's about a small town, small time crook who gets a bunch of people together for like one last heist. That's what, okay. and it's only a four issue run. I know that because I, I have all four issues. So I don't know how far they can go with it. Maybe they, this is like something that see like something like this. I feel like is a one season and done. Yeah. Uh, but it's almost like a Ocean's Eleven type of movie into a series. It's going to be animated. So I think it'll be great because. The way Millar has been, Miller, Mark Miller has been doing this. I, I think his series are going to be very well done. At for all these for Magic Order, we want. Oh, yeah. um, obviously, we got Super Crooks. We, uh, Nemesis just got announced. So, yeah, you know, I will say this though it makes me a little worried when um, I read articles that say his first. His, so his first product project, Jupiter's Legacy, out of, on Netflix, pretty much. Uh-huh. He's already having issues with the. The, the netflix people that worries me a little bit so yeah we'll see man fingers crossed hopefully they can work it out and uh we still get magic order and nemesis and all the other good goodies as well so it's so bad right now i was just, i'm just looking on ebay and i actually have two copies of jupiter's legacy number one 9.8 there's a 9.8 on ebay for 92 dollars <laughs> or best offer and I remember wow. when the book, when right before this, the movie uh, series came out, it was like $200 for like a 9.8. So and it's already taken a dive just oh, based totally. on this news. Yeah. Maybe. That's insane. It's crazy. That's too bad, man. <sighs> so, well, sorry, fel- fellas, everyone out there is listening. Sorry to about this news. But anyway, moving on to kind of some weird movie news. So I've never been super familiar with this character, but. We have the Toxic Avenger reboot is coming out and, you know, starring Peter Dinklage as the cult hero. Uh-huh. And they just cast our boy Elijah Wood as the main villain. So if you don't know who Elijah Wood is, you need to go watch Lord of the Rings or <laughs> The Good Son or any of his multitude of awesome, amazing movies. So anyway, according to Illuminati, 
Wood will play Bar Bob Garbinger. <laughs> is this supposed to sound like garbage? I guess I don't know. Bob Garbinger, whose description is a, as a, is as follows: Leonine hair and eerie plastic surgery. Evil head of the shady company Garb X. He has no regard for the well-being of anyone but himself and embarks on a murderous spree to become as powerful as Toxy. His ego is bolstered by his standing amongst the town's official, but in reality, he lives in fear of the underworld gang he's indebted to. Um, I don't, I'll be honest, I've never watched Toxic Avenger. I, I don't, the original movie, and I, I've never read any of the books. I have issue number one, but I am not familiar with Toxic Avenger at all. Are you? I've seen the original movie, and I can obviously picture number one because it was on Lords of the Longbox list. Yeah. But, I definitely don't recall anything pa past that. Like I, I, I just not a fan. I guess. <laughs> uh, I, to be the only thing I'll, I do remember is they did come out with an animated series back when we were younger. That's the only thing in Toxic Avenger I I vaguely remember that. Yeah, from like the early '90s, just because when they do like '90s montage uh, videos on like YouTube, that intro pops up or like they'll have like a quick animation, mm -hmm. but that's all I know from the toxic Avenger and the movie itself. But I was probably too young and didn't really care for it. Right. Yeah. Might have to go check it out. It's probably really cringe. I bet it's kind of one of those cult favorite, like just people like, no, it's so good. It's probably oh, not Avenger, that good. Yeah. yeah. It's probably not that good at all, but so oh. the, the, actually the animated series would, was called toxic crusaders. Yes. Yes. I remember that. Yeah. So yeah, that's that's the oh god. Now I'm looking at the pictures. I yeah, I can kind of recall some of these characters. I can't. I don't know the names at all, but I do now. I'm looking at this and I'm like, oh my god, I probably watched this when I was a kid. God, it looks terrible. Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Might have to check it out to, before it comes on. So yeah. So YouTube Toxic Crusaders, and I'm sure they have all the episodes for free. Cool. I want to check that out. But, so we have one other news, right? From yeah. Our uh, some TV stuff, and this is, I guess, we'll we'll end on a high note for all the TV yeah. and movie news. Uh, so we're we're all wondering when the Disney show What If is coming out. So this is over at the Direct.com. Disney prepares release of Marvel Studios What If. We are finally knowing when this is coming out. So they do say it is going to be coming out in August, which is. Great, because that'll nice. be right after Loki. So August 6th is the release date of What If animated series, and which means that if it is August 6th, it will be moving back to Friday since Loki is going to be coming out on Wednesdays. Uh, of course, the Bad Batch will be wrapping up sometime, I'm, my guess is, in, in July as well, if not right around that August cutoff, because then Bad Batch will be done and on Fridays, and then the what if series will be starting on august 6th so sweet uh, we've seen a couple trailers for this obviously the what if series is a lot of the actor and actresses are revoicing their characters just in, in different um medians so we have like a t'challa being star lord and michael roker is coming back for for that um was peggy carter is going to be captain america so there's a lot of things i'm really excited for this series this has been something that i've been since they showed off that first teaser, yeah, D twenty three, I was I was all in on the What If series. I thought the animation was awesome, very futuristic, almost cell shaded animation. Mm -hmm. So, what do you think about it? I'm pretty excited too. You know, honestly, there's a lot to be excited about this series. It'll be fun. It's going to be short. Probably, I'm assuming they're going to be like thirty minute episodes. I would imagine. Mm -hmm. um, it'll be short, little fun things. But you want to know what I love about it the most is there's nothing I hate more than like when we get to like the cinematic universe and then people want to see like, you know, oh, like, not not necessarily like what if, but like different when characters turn into other characters, I'm like, please don't waste time with those storylines. Let's get the big storyline. So this is like, to me, I like it. It's like, cool. Let's get rid of all that crap here. So we don't have to do it live action. So, mm -hmm. um, I think it's going to be great. I, I love how all the actors came back and are doing the same voices. It, I think that episode with Chadwick Boseman is probably gonna be hard to watch. Um, mm -hmm. it's just going to be, you know, a tearjerker, but I think it's really, really cool. Everyone's coming back and voicing their characters. It shows a love for the MCU in general. Um, and uh, we'll get some Uatu, the Watcher, which is really cool. So. Yes. First time we've really seen him since probably was the 90s and 2000s animated series that they did the Avengers stuff. But and there's a lot of series that we really don't even know. There's a lot of 
like from what we've seen, we've seen, you know, the captain, uh, Captain Britain, Peggy Carter. We've seen right. uh, Bucky Winter Soldier fighting a zombie uh, Captain America. Uh, Iron Man is well, Cap Steve Rogers is like Iron Man, I think. That was one of it. And like I said, the Guardians of the Galaxy is uh, T'Challa. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure there's a lot of things that we don't know that they haven't even showed because I'm sure they want to keep a lot of stuff secret too. Like, of course, don't yeah. Don't spoil everything. And I hope they do. Yeah. <laughs> 10 episodes though. So um, they already have a second 10 episode season in development as well. So it's cool. I love how we're getting these shows that are going like once uh, WandaVision ended, we got Captain America or Captain uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier. And now we have Loki starting this week on uh -huh. Friday, actually, when this when this episode drops. Next and week. Then, no, no, yeah. next, next Wednesday. Was it next Wednesday? Yeah, oh, Wednesday. Wednesday. Yeah. You, ah, I forgot to switch to Wednesday. Yeah. Next Wednesday. And then and then yeah. So then we'll have we'll go right into what if and we're gonna be peppered with movies in between, which is gonna be great. So back to the MCU, man. Hell yeah. Definitely. Cool. Thank you for giving us good news and ending on something after <laughs> Jupiter's Legacy. <laughs> Who's actually super bummed about Jupiter's Legacy, man? That's listen. When you told me right before we started recording, I was actually upset and I didn't want to do this anymore. <laughs> you just quit. You just break your computer. <laughs> so okay, well, we're gonna finish out with our last segment that we do every week, which is what are we currently reading? If you're your first time joining us, Justin and I kind of talk about titles that we are either old, new, just came out weekly that we really like and we want to highlight and kind of tell you guys about. So uh, why don't you start this week, Justin? So this week's, uh, what am I currently reading, is the current Justice League series. Mm, good uh, choice. I, I have not, I to be honest, the probably issue one until, what was it, maybe 58 or 59, I definitely didn't read. But you know, we talked about this very early when they were doing the Infinite Frontier for DC with all these artists and writers taking over different storylines. So we have, of course, Brian Michael Bendis and David Marquez. So of course, Bendis, he's bringing in, you know, his baby girl right now, Naomi. So we have new introductions, of course, to the normal team of like Superman, Batman, you have Hawkgirl, Aquaman is in there, but more recently in these past couple issues, which has been this prism storyline, you have black Adam, you have Naomi, and you also have, um, Apollo that just showed up in the last two issues, which is really dope. But the storyline is kind of going in between Earth and this character named Brutus, who almost remind I don't know if you're reading it, but yeah. it reminds me very much of um, Stephen Wolf and the yeah. Justice League movie because okay. they they fight. You know, he comes to Earth, and then all the characters end up going to. Uh, not only does the character Brutus fight Earth, different parts of the city, but then he goes to Themyscira and fights them and then in the more recent issues they end up traveling to where Naomi is from and it's the first time Naomi's ever been back to her home planet and we only briefly knew about Naomi's home planet from her miniseries which I talked about many moons ago on this podcast so I think I think it's uh it's a very been a very good read Marquez's art is, is really dope as well and I kind of want to see where this is going to play out. You know, you have Black Adam, who's kind of like that anti-hero, and he really doesn't get along with Superman or Batman, but he's there. Um, and them also being on this different Earth, all their powers are kind of, you know, heightened Wonky, a little bit. Yeah, Some are stronger and some are weaker. Yeah. Yeah, it's very interesting. So that's what I'm currently reading. There are only, I think, uh, part four issues in on this part. And then, of course, um, my favorite thing, but of course it's not, I really wish again, this was still the ongoing series is the backup stories for justice league dark. So it's, you know, it's good that you're getting two, you know, you're getting two justice league stories for the price of one. And right now this whole backup story with John Constantine, um, Zatanna detective chimp, and they've reintroduced Ragman. Yeah, and, yeah. um, there's some stuff going on with him that I really don't want to spoil. If you've read the justice league dark volume two run, um, there's a villain that was introduced there who pretty much played a, big role throughout that series and he's kind of in this uh, little backup story that they've been you know going with so and, and it's something that i really enjoy and it sucks that the justice league dark series ended you know it, it, it kind of it should be continued but i understand that you can't have all these series going on if no one's really buying them except for myself and, <laughs> and me <other> yeah. <laughs> yeah. so that's what i'm currently reading this week um zach what are you reading this week 
first off, those were good talk. Though that was a good book. I actually just I just finished that a little bit before we started the the show. Mm-hmm. So you know, I really enjoyed that too. Um, so I'm only gonna talk about one topic, but I am gonna give a shout out that the gala, the X Men gala, just started this week. Mm-hmm. So we had three issues of that. Uh, the first one being the Marauders, which is like one of the important ones, and then X Force and Hellions. So really good stuff the the x-men gala i'm sure i'll do a highlight or maybe a mutant monday when that's all said and done kind of recapping that but definitely check those out but the books i wanted to talk about this week that i finally got caught up on is the old guard tales through time so if you read the old guard by greg rucka or watch the netflix show which is kind of how i got introduced to it was through the netflix show and i thought the movie was awesome and was like, I got to go find the source material. And I devoured the first two volumes of The Old mm. Guard. So now they're doing like a Tales Through Time. And I believe it's a five-issue miniseries. And they're kind of two stories so far in each issue, just highlighting the different uh, members of The Old Guard. And it's really cool. Uh, the first one we get is uh, the story about um, the main the main chick's like uh, axe and how she got it, uh, Andromica's axe and whatnot. Mm-hmm. And then you kind of get some focus on the other characters, the old guard. So I just, I mean, is it amazing? No, but I loved it. I really love the old guard universe. I'm excited for the, the final volume, volume three to eventually come out. Kind of wish they would have waited on this tales through time and, <laughs> and done that. But I really enjoyed Greg Rucka's writing. And um, I think if you're an old guard fan like myself, you will definitely be a fan of these issues. So check them out. Um, they're still coming out weekly. Um, I think the number two just came out, I don't know, maybe last week, two weeks ago, something like that. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, so three more issues coming your way. Yeah, and that's great that if anybody who's, who has Netflix and who hasn't seen Old Guard, obviously it came out during COVID and it yeah. probably went under the radar. I remember watching it with um, my wife and my in-laws and I thought it was great because I never read the comics. Right. And then I, same thing, like I watched the movie and I was like, yo, this is pretty badass." And then, you know, you go back and you read it from image and it's only a couple issues. And then they did the second series and now they're on to this third series. And I haven't, I haven't started the new one, the new series. So I definitely will have to look into that. Maybe once it's done, I'll read all of them, but yeah. I'm, I like how they do it. it. It's, you know, small stories. So mm-hmm. it's not just like a long drawn out series. You can just pick it up or just buy the trade and you know, it's done in one reading. Yeah. Awesome. Well, cool. Good pick. Yeah. So, so that's all we got this week, guys. Uh, I want to say thanks again for tuning in. Thank you for the questions that we received from everyone today. Uh, Astro Wizard and uh, who's the second one? Uh, Hard Knox Collectibles. Hard Knox Collectibles. So I really appreciate that, guys. Um, we love getting questions from you guys, whether it's on our YouTube channel, on the Instagram page. Uh, you can also find us on the Comic Con podcast at gmail.com where you can send in voice messages, which we love to play online if we have them. Um, any questions, questions, any comments, you know, send them that way to the email account. You can also find us on Instagram on Nemesis Prime has his own Instagram account, as well as myself, Milton the Manimal, or the Comic-Con podcast on Instagram. So that's where you can find us all. If you're already listening, then you know you can find us on Apple iTunes, Spotify, Google Podcasts, or Anchor FM as well. So yeah, that's all I got this week. Uh, what about you, Justin? Uh, I will be at the first three-day event Comic-Con here in New Jersey. I am going to be visiting the Garden State Comic Fest this weekend here in New Jersey. Typically, it's in the end of June or early July. They have it in Morristown, New Jersey. But uh, this weekend, if you're in the tri-state area, it is in Jersey Gardens Mall, which is like the second time they've done this type of uh, comic convention where it's in a mall, like it's in a... um, typically like a rundown rundown store store that was there that no longer is there and has not been rented so it's in elizabeth new jersey i will be going there definitely on friday so if you're listening to this on friday um friday hours i think are two to seven uh i do have a weekend pass depending on what the weekend looks like here in new jersey i may show up another day uh definitely not all three if anybody's going let me know maybe we'll uh we'll meet up uh, that's all I have. Um, and then uh, next week we will be making an announcement because uh, Zach's got something cool, but you know, we don't want to give it away yet. So we'll be making an announcement next week on the podcast. Um, that's all I have. Been a great episode 22 in the books. Yep. Thanks a lot guys. And we will see you later. Peace. Peace out.